Hiya guys, Terry from Smooth Workshop. Just doing a quick vlog here. Um, I'm trying something out using two cameras. Now, most of my videos are shot on this um, movie HD cam, which is basically a cheaper version of GoPro. Uh, it's about 150 quid, so it's not that cheap. Um, the mic isn't that great on it, so I'm going to be looking at a mic as well. So um, I got myself one of these boom things, which is basically like a light. I'll just move my camera up, maybe you'll see it better. Um, one of these things. I don't want to move it too much because I've got my camera set up in it just now. Um, for swiveling the camera about on top of my bench. And I've got a wee adapter in it with my, this is an RB Nokia Lumia phone. This is the one that I've done some of my vlogs on before. So to give a more top down view. Uh, so I'm going to try that out. I've got a gimbal on order, um, same one that Tony from Helgen 35's workshop uses. This has got a straight rod that comes out with a threaded insert for your standard camera. Um, it doesn't really give me much rotation and movement because I would actually like to clamp this on the bench somewhere about here so I can come in with the camera and and come in for the angles so you guys get a better shot when I'm actually filming stuff. So that's on order um, from the company that's got the same name as the Big River. Um, in, is it Africa? Anyway, no. <laughs> Geography is rubbish. Um, so yeah, that's on order, so I'm expecting that round about the end of September. So this is just a little test, a little vlog. Got a package in today. Ooh. I know what's in it, um, so I'm going to take it off the bench. It's from my, my friends at uh, Scale Model Shop. It's one of these um, oh, hobby zone um, storage things. This one's for my paint brushes and, and a tool holder on the end. Now, I would have got it from eModels, but every time I went to order it from eModels, it's been out of stock, so they had it in, so I got it from them. Uh, another thing I've been looking at is brushes. Now, let's see if this overhead camera works. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing some uh, figurines at some point. Uh, I don't really have a lot in detail brushes. Most of my brushes are all humbrol. I've got some... Um, Oh, is it ABC brushes, which I've been using, uh, sable hair ones. They're quite good. Um, but I'm, I'm wanting to see what I can get in the detail side. So I've got one of these uh, Meg Abtailong 502 ones. So I'm just going to have a look at it, actually. Now, it says it's a 4-0. So is it a size 4 or is it a 4 zeros? I don't know. I'm, I'm not used to all these brush sizes. So let's... Oh, that's rather well held in there. Come out, you little devil. Okay. How are you going to come out? There it comes. Okay, so let's get a look at this. This is a mega ab tie long one. I don't know what kind of bristles are in it. It looks a bit frayed and splayed. It's not... Hmm, I've got something dark. There's my eye water box coming in on the top here. It looks a little bit frayed and splayed. There's... I'm going to have to trim it. It's a bit shocking. But I've just wet it and taken it to a point. It does look like a... I'm on camera. There we go. It does look like a 4-0. Um, very, very fine. It's got a little splinter of a hair off of it. So I'm going to have to uh, sort that out before I use it. But yeah, so that was that was only about £4. Um, yeah, it says 4 zero, so it must be 4 zeros. Because the old ones I've got, right, so that's ab tie long one. Right, get the colour back. Um, as I say, I've got the uh, Citadel one. It's probably just a zero. I'm going to call it a layer brush, small layer brush. Um, so I've got one of those. I've actually got a couple of those. And... The other really small ones I've got on three zeros, um, they're just humbrol ones and they're pretty done and they're pretty starting to splay out in the end. I need to get some of that conditioning soap that you guys use or not. So I've got kind of them and I've got my ABC brushes and everything. So I thought I would try the, the 502 Ab Tiling brush out see how I got on with that. So that'll they'll all go nicely in my new paint stand that I've got. Uh, right, something else, right, I'll put it up my side camera first, right, 
these metal polishing powders, burnishing powders, buffing powders, um, I think, was it Carl's done one on the C1 metalizer? Um, this is the Uche Van der Rocher. Okay. Um, you pay £10 for this little pot, and that's all you get. You just get the pot. The C1 metalizer, I didn't check the price on that. I, I just heard that this one gave it. Going by pictures, uh, gave a slightly better chrome effect. Um, I'll see it on the overhead camera there. Okay. Um, this one just comes as a powder. Uh, it just says apply with a cotton cloth or a bud, prime the surface using a gloss or flat black base coat. The shine will be according to the gloss level achieved. Also consider variations in base coat colours to adjust brightness. The product is non-toxic but should not be inhaled or swallowed. Okay, and it tells you to visit the website for more details. So it's a very small, I think it's a 25 gram, 25 milliliter pot. And that was just under £10 here in the UK. Um, so it doesn't come with a face mask like you see one does. It doesn't come with a, the little makeup uh, applicators. Uh, or the, the buffing pads. Now the buffing pads, ugh, I've got them anyway. They're just makeup removers. Um, and I'll I'll go into uh, one of the the local pharmacy type, you know, perfumey where the girls get all their makeup things from. See if I can get little the some of the little applicators. You can use cotton buds, but uh, I'll get some anyway. So yeah, I got this to try. Uh, I'll 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 do an actual review on it, and I'll do it with some spoons. Uh, which is the way I like to do it, and I'm going to try it with a few different um, paint bases, a bit like I did with my Mr. Hobby Super Metallic um, paints, and we'll see how we get on with that, because I'm always looking for something a bit more shiny and chrome-like, and uh, these look the way to go, so I'll do a separate video on that uh, when I get around to doing all my spoons and everything. Right, so this is really just testing out the cameras and overhead cameras and everything. So let us see. Right, the hobby's on. Can can you make that out? Now I can't zoom in, but I'm just wondering if this is better than how I did it before. So it shows you the fully built up unit sitting there. So we're on the overhead cam, hopefully. And just as a comparison, I've just flicked to my, my camera at the left. Normally the way I would work with my camera is I would hold it up like that to you. And I'm just wondering if, if I can get this to work, um, if the overhead camera's a bit better, even though it's it's not got a zoom on, on this one. Um, and it tells you how to put it together. So it's they're all, these things are all pretty straightforward. Um, what have we got? We've got a lot of laser cut stuff here. Laser cut or die cut. So obviously your brush holder bits. And it'll white out a bit on the camera, more than likely. So that goes... Probably above that or under that. I'll need to read the instructions. It goes above it. Got a nice wee base here. Um, they don't come with the glue in that for them, but that looks like another one that goes underneath. It's just PVA I'll use for sticking it together. Uh, what's this? This is a little raw, a little bit here, which will probably go somewhere along there, knowing these things. So there's another bit. Um, Ah, that's the back. This is the base. There we go. So, yeah. I'll need to read the instructions, obviously, but you know, it's all, it's all pretty much. Are we on camera? It all pretty much slots in together and glues in together, and you know, all goes together all nice like this with PBA. Yeah, it's probably better on the side camera for this one. Yeah, it all goes together with the PVA and then you stick all the bits in and, you know, make up your little paint rack and everything. Yeah, so I've got one of these, so that's what I'm going to be making this afternoon. And there's all the little, all the little parts cut out for it there. It's really, really quite well made. Um, and they're pretty straightforward. And I've got another four of these near Dimium or whatever you call them, earth magnets, love these, so that's another four. Uh, keeping hold of these because uh, 
they come in handy for things. I need to get myself some smaller ones as well, but yeah, so that's overhead. Right, so I'm going to stick all that back in the box, because it's not really showing you how to put this together or anything like that. It's testing out the camera setup, and it's just, I'm going to do like a wee 10 minute video and see if I can splice various parts of the video together and get it working. So, on that basis, I'll put that to the side just now. So, this is my normal work area, so if I'm on the left hand camera, I'm usually talking to you like this with my hands, hello. And you can vaguely see, right, I'll pull, I'll pull something into shot, right, this is the one I need to get back onto, this is my, my one, uh, 112 uh, Rebel Level 3 kit, the X-Wing, um, with the wings and everything like that. So I'm just really wanting to see if me trying to do overhead shots and that's actually going to, going to help you guys at all. So what I'm just going to do just now is I'm going to flick for this camera which is the one at the side, which I normally use, okay? And I'm going to come up onto this overhead one, okay? And uh, it's just really a test for me. Can I get it working? And like I said, see when I move sprues into shot and things, you know, I, can you see these better if I do it this way than if I do it side camera? This way. Back to the overhead. Right, obviously on an overhead... I ideally want something with zoom, but I, I don't have the money for any other cameras at the moment, so I'm working with what I have. So I've got my movie cam on the left. This is a wee Nokia Lumia phone on the top. As I say, oh, you might hear some circular saws going, the next door neighbour's getting some uh, double glazing in. Nothing I can do about that. I do have a, a bridge camera, as I say, that has a video feature, um, and I haven't tried it yet, so... Once I get the gimbal, I might try using that for the overhead because it will give me a, a manual zoom. So anyway, that's an idea if I had a sprue that I wanted to talk about. So this is actually the pylons, uh, the weapon pylons um, for the kit, which I haven't fitted yet. Um, this is the uh, the actual upper body that I've just done little bits of spraying on. It's not finished, obviously. I'm working on cockpit and all that sort of stuff. Um, just for another example, I mean, right, there's a wee pilot that I want to paint with these, these wee brushes, right, I've done, you know, a bit of a base and these boots and stuff like that, so I'm just wondering how clear that is to you, because I can actually see this figure, right, and get down on them, and if I was to put my optivizer on, I could see what I was painting here, would you guys be able to see that, because using the phone, it's small enough, it's not actually in front of my face, if I have it in this position, yeah, um, is it close enough for you to see what I'm maybe painting once I get small brushes? You know, is it going to be better than I'll flick over the side what I had before, trying to show you what I'm doing off to the side, back onto the overhead again? So it's just, yeah, do you think it's worth me pursuing, trying to see? Obviously, if you're seeing this, I've managed to make it work. It's going to be more work than shooting a, a single camera video. But do you think me, you know, for example, say I was showing you how to paint the pilot or whatever, because I'm thinking forward to my figure figurine painting. So that, that's me painting the pilot or whatever. Or say I'm working on the LEDs on the wings and I'm trying to show you what I'm doing with the LEDs. I think it's a lot better on an overhead camera. Um, not sure how you guys are picking it up, but it's it's really just, as I say, it's just a test for me. Um, this is a wing with the blown ones that I need to, to get back onto, so I've started desoldering some of them already. Um, I don't know if I'll actually film me doing that. I think where I left off, I've done one set and I'd show you, showed you them working on the actual build video series. Um, so I was going to go off camera and do all this, so I might just do that anyway, but I need to get on with this build because it's for the uh, ISM Summer Sci-Fi SIG uh, over at International School Modelers. Um, so I think that ends in September. I still need to check because somebody did say that it was um, going to be extended, but I haven't checked on that yet. And I haven't really got back anywhere near this. And I've just noticed an album there that I don't like, but uh, yeah. So it's really just, yeah, testing this camera out. Um, for example, 
is it easier for you guys to see me working on something at this angle and you know getting a paintbrush and saying right I'm now going to paint this bit and all that kind of thing than it is from the, the side so yeah well it looks like it's around about 15 minutes um I did uh, <laughs> a lot of you a lot of guys are, are quite new at making the videos as well I'm re I've been doing it for a couple of years on and off but I'm relatively new at trying like adding an overhead perspective and a side perspective and hopefully make my sound better and things like that but uh, yeah if I can get this working it's it's going to be quite good so um, is it clear can you see what I'm doing with my hands you know um, yeah I think right so uh, enough waffling so it was just a BV log I got a delivery and uh, just wanted to see if I can get my video editing software to work with two cameras um, these aren't live fed into a computer so I've started that camera up I've started this camera up I've done a so I can match up the audio files for those of you that are editing your own you know you look for the spikes match the two spikes up and that's the videos like the clapper boards you know so I'm, I'm trying this out anyway enough waffling hope you're having fun it's a bit rainy here up here in uh, Blackburn in Scotland today and uh, a bit overcast, so I'm hoping to get some bench time uh, a bit later on. So hope you're all enjoying yourself. Happy modelling. Speak to you later. Bye.